That's a really strong play from Marta Vimera. Counts gets the bases clearing double. Um, what stood out to you from tonight's game? Another win, a series win. Well, I think that's the takeaway is um, series win, you know, two in a row against a good Cal team. Um, so you can never never argue about that or the things we can clean up. Heck, yeah, you know, but things you'd like to see better, uh, better executed on the offensive side and, and the, the pitching side, absolutely. But I'm never going to complain about a win against a good team, especially like that. So um, always interesting. You know, you can almost expect it. We're not going to have an easy – Coast to the finish line around here. It just is is the way it is. So we, we know that we can't let off the gas and score as many runs as we can and and try to finish it out. So uh, clutch hitting Mario obviously with the grand slam there after it looked like we were going to squander a big opportunity with bases loaded, no outs, and a couple of punch outs and get down one two and he you know puts a charge into one which was which was huge. Um, you know Campy you know coming up with the big bases clearing double. Uh, those are, we, other than that, we didn't really hit very well with runners in scoring position. So, um, had a lot of opportunities to cash in more runs, but we, those were the two big hits, obviously. But other than that, we were, we were pretty dismal, I think, with, with guys in scoring position. But, um, end of the day, it's a W for the good guys, and I'm not going to complain about that. That's uh, some really good production out of Mario the last couple of games, and uh, it seems like he's starting to really settle into to his role. At third base, after kind of being real shaky at the plate to start the season, uh, what do you credit to that, or is it more so uh, if he was in here? He shows a sort of consistent mindset, very calm and uh, composed. But what have you seen from him throughout the season? No, I think it. You know, it, it's tough. He's in a different role than he's been in most of his career. He's been accustomed to being an everyday guy um, at USF and. You know, coming here and, and getting spotting playing time, it's it's tough. It's it's tar- hard to figure out. You know, your timing and your rhythm when you're you know not playing a whole lot and uh, excuse me, not only offensively but defensively. It's tough to find your rhythm. And he's playing a different position. He's playing third as opposed to second. So he's going through some adjustments. But he, you know, I, I'm I'm hopeful, and it looks like he's starting to get more and more comfortable. And uh, with with the way our uh, where our squad's banged up, he's you know we're gonna need him. So it, it's um. You know, hopefully he continues to produce and do well. I haven't seen Sheeper kind of have some trouble like that in quite some time tonight. I mean, what was kind of your viewpoint on kind of what Cal was being able to pick up on and put up some runs tonight? Well, I think um, you know we, we Green uh, Green put a charge into one there on him, and you know, we just missed an O2 spot. You know, we we got to be better O2 right there, and um, he knows that. And then I think. You know, I'll have to go back and look at video, but it <clears throat> looked like he was, you know, up a little bit up in the zone maybe, and they were they were laying off his his uh, split. You know, a um, couple times they swung and, and looked pretty ugly, but they made a pretty quick adjustment on it. So, um, you know, we'll go back and look and see where those pitches were if he was leaving them down the middle or whatever. But you know, he's human. He's gonna he's gonna give up some hits every now and again, and like I told him, wasn't your best stuff. But hey, man, you, you kept us kept us in the lead, so um, that's all that matters. Uh, well, we're going to need them, you know, and, and not only because, like I said, we're, we're thin and we, we're down a few guys and, and doesn't doesn't look like we're going to get a couple of them back anytime soon. So, you know, these guys are going to have to contribute and, you know, it's, it's also my job to figure out ways to get them in the game to keep them sharp. So that's been my challenge early on. And, and um, but as we move forward, we're, we're going to have to you know, move guys around into positions that maybe they're not used to playing. And it's, Hey, given, given what we're going to have to do, that's, that might be the recipe where we got to throw it together and, and, there's going to be guys out of position, and it might look a little awkward, but hey, just go play and play some backyard wiffle ball. Catch it and throw it to the right base and go try and outslug them. So uh, that might have to be the recipe as we move down the stretch here. But, um, you know, guys are contributing as big. You know, the, the Lancer and and uh, Mario today had, you know, a nice day. So um, we're going to need those guys to, to continue stepping up. And, you know, the, the other guys aren't going to stay hot all year. They're going to be up and down, and we're going to need other guys to contribute. Coach, 
Coach 12 walks is a lot for your offense to be given in one night. What are your initial thoughts about the play discipline that your offense has been showing over the last few weeks? And do you feel like that's improving after a performance like tonight, or do you feel like it's more on average as well? Um, <clears throat> well, I think we, when you get given 12 walks, you know, you'd, you'd like to put up some more runs than, than we did. And, you know, it's tough to complain about putting up 10 runs, but when they're going to give you 12 free passes, you got to take advantage of those situations a little bit better, I think. Um, so I'm being critical, of course, but, but our goals are to keep getting better. So we have to figure out ways to, you know, move runs across with, with 12 walks and three errors. And, you know, we got we got to figure out ways to, to come up with some big hits when we and hopefully put nails in the coffin, you know, to take a little bit of pressure off some of our pitching staff to, you know, use certain guys in, in different situations so we can save arms if we can. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things that we got to try to do a better job of, of cashing in when we can. How do you feel in Tucson? Uh, obviously, had a chance to sweep and there on the Sunday game. Now Sunday game tomorrow. What needs to go into ensuring you get all three games? Um, well, you can't get a third one without the first two, so we, we got those, and you know now it's just a matter of, of coming. You know, like I said, the results take care of themselves as long as you show up and, and play play the right way and, and have the mindset to, to come in and play the right way. So, uh, hopefully, our guys are ready to go tomorrow. They should be. Um, you know, we can't afford to, to have any mental letdowns or whatever. It's tomorrow's weather is supposed to be kind of crazy. I, I hear so. Um, you know, we'll find out. We got to keep the ball in the yard and. Depending on what way the wind is blowing, uh, if it's going in or out tomorrow, we'll see. But you know, it'll be it'll be some elements to deal with. And hopefully, our guys come ready to play. Coach, just your overall thoughts on Ben Jacobs uh, outing today and how he kind of navigated after that first inning. Oh, man, the first first inning's kind of been giving us some fits uh, as of late, but um, you know, he he was able to to keep it small there in the first. And I thought that was big. Uh, we had a, had a chance to have that unravel a little bit and he was able to keep it to one run right there and make some big pitches when he had to and um, you know walked the tightrope there a couple times but was able to keep the damage fairly small and, and keep us in there so um, you know wasn't wasn't his most electric performance but he did enough to, to keep us in the game and give us give us an opportunity to take the lead so um, you know overall he was uh, you know he was solid you know and we, we needed some innings and to the last two days to ask relievers to start games and try to give us some length is, you know, it's been difficult, but we've been able to navigate it and get through it. With him coming in at, um, in place of Burns and then, of course, with Mario coming in at third, what does it say about just these players' ability to uh, have their name called and, and show up? Yeah, you know, just try to preach to these guys, stay ready and be ready. You know, you never know when your number is going to be called and we're going to need you. So, um, you know, stay stay available, stay ready, and try to stay sharp. Even though you're not getting the playing time you might want, you never know when your opportunity is coming. So, when that happens, take advantage of it and make my job tough, which some of these guys are doing right now. Have you or Sam spoken to the starters at all about you know emphasizing making sure that you get your clean first and, and not having these issues in the future? Um, well, again, these guys are last two days or last you know several days are a lot of relievers that are starting games and and guys are asked to be in different roles but um you, know, you certainly don't want to go out and give up runs they're not trying to uh but there, there has to be an emphasis of hopefully setting the tone and getting off to a better start than we have we don't want to don't want to have to climb out of holes every day if we don't have to but if that means we win then hey we'll go ahead and spot them a few runs in the first every day if that means our it's going to wake our, our bats up and get them going but um you know that's something that you know uh, Last couple of days haven't been great on that, but um, I'm confident we'll they'll adjust. And they'll be fine. Coach Ryan told us just now about how he's been trying to mentor this young pitching staff, especially the freshman like Cole and Wyatt, and how to adjust to them on a day to day basis. What have you seen just from a large still perspective in your leadership, looking at what he's necessarily done to try to help those guys, especially with how much you talk about how young this pitching staff is and the better that Ryan brings? Ryan Campos. Yes. Um, you know, Campy's Campy's a staple. He's a calming presence. He's not a not a real um, overly vocal guy, but it just his overall leadership presence and calming personality, I think, is is important for for these young guys to you know for him to lead them. So there's different different styles of leadership. Uh, there's guys that that are vocal and loud and boisterous. That's not Ryan. You know, Campy's more uh, subdued and calming and and 
you know, just saying very matter of fact, hey, this is what we got to do, and it's in a calming manner. So uh, he relates well to a lot of these young guys that are, you know, that like throwing to him, and, and um, obviously he's done a great job at it so far. It really kind of parked on the leadership just kind of as of late. Do you feel like that's kind of improved, and how do you fit in? So how do you feel like it's changed? Um, you know, I think it, it's, uh, you know, leadership can be developed. Um, it, it, some guys, you know, have it and they're born with it, and other guys need to develop it. And I think as a whole in our clubhouse, that's something that needs to be developed a little bit more, and, and guys got to get out of their comfort zones and be able to, to do that. I think we have plenty of guys in there that are capable of doing it, and they're starting to be um, more accountability, and, and uh, guys are starting to step up. So uh, for me, that's, that's a good sign. Coach, you talked about before the season how this was kind of your full recruiting class that you were able to get um, under your leadership, and then also now navigating the evolving transfer portal. Um, how have you balanced um, the guys that you've acquired through the portal and then the up-and-coming guys like Mendoza and trying to navigate the different spots and, and the levels of experience? Um, you know, for me, it's just uh, navigating that is simple. It, it, you just buy into what we're trying to do as a program. And whether or not you're a new guy or, or you're a freshman or a fourth year senior, fifth year senior coming from another program, you know, you're coming here for one common goal and one common purpose. So uh, if you're not here for that reason, then I guess you chose the wrong place. But um, for me, that's got to be the buy in. Guys have to understand what what wearing a Sun Devil uniform means and um, buy into what we're trying to do as a program. And um, so far, it's, you know, I have no complaints on that. And with that, on that note, like just like the program and that forefront of the mind, when you were talking to some of those guys like Lance and Mara uh, and other transfer portal additions, or you, some of those messages uh, about maybe having to sacrifice a little bit at that playing time to for the betterment of the program. Um, I've never asked guys to sacrifice playing time. Um, I've I've told guys when you come in here, you're going to get every opportunity to win a starting spot, and you're going to get an opportunity. I don't promise playing time. Uh, the, the players ultimately write the lineup, not me, but based on how well they're doing. So, um, you know, some guys have, you know, Brandon Compton's a great example. Um, I was not anticipating Brandon Compton having this type of year. Um, he got the opportunity to start opening day, and he's – hasn't relinquished that opportunity, you know, for the most part all year. Um, so, you know, there's there's guys that have taken that and made it very difficult for other guys to get in the lineup. You know, I'm not going to – very often I'm not going to sit Brandon Compton and just to get some other guys in there, we got to win, try and win every game. So, you know, some of that guys get a little bit frustrated, and I understand that. That's totally respectable, and they're competitive kids that want to play. So that's – that I'll never take away from them. But – um, that's where I say, stay ready for your opportunity. You never know when it's coming. Um, so, uh, you know, I didn't. I don't bring guys in here with the anticipation of sitting them. I, I, I bring them in with the anticipation of, hey, how can you help us win a game today? And those roles form, and you know, guys take advantage of opportunities, and they let their guard down. Other guys are going to get a shot, and if they don't, then they'll keep playing. What went into the decision to have Isaiah Bunt? And a little bit of chaos on the bases. Um, you know, he, he's a uh, couple things. I mean, I think worst case scenario, it's a sack and gets another guy in scoring position right there. On a, on a, we needed a, a big run. I thought at that point in time, we were up one six to five. I think, um, you know, got the leadoff guy on base. I figured worst case scenario, it's it's just like a sack. But maybe we maybe we sneak a base hit here. They weren't really anticipating him bunting. It looked like they were playing back and. He put down a, a beauty and forced the issue, and merry-go-round started. So, um, you know, with a guy that that's, you know, hasn't hasn't been swinging as great as he would like to as of late. Sometimes that's what can spark a guy, um, and it's in your bag of tricks, man. You got to use it sometimes. And and he was able to, he's worked hard at it. Um, that's that's part of, you know, Gillies Bunners Club. Those guys, you know, handful of those guys have been out bunting a lot, and it's like, man, this is that's for those times where you need to get it down and maybe spark a rally. We've seen him do that a couple times over the last two years. What kind of asset is that for his game overall? Well, I think when it's just another another arrow in the quiver, man. You, you gotta you gotta have it. And now what's to do? Now the third baseman's got to come up and and play a little bit tighter. You can't just shift him and put. 
three guys over on that side of the infield, you have to honor that. Otherwise, it's an easy base hit. So it, it plays into his game if he's able to do it, and just it adds another dimension to his game. Considering that uh, Thomas is out for a bit now, and no one has secured that third spot in the rotation, what are your thoughts now on Robbie P. and Jake Paul, as you called in the past, um, sacrificing some of the, the good outings that you've gotten from guys out of the bullpen to fill uh, those starting spots? Well, we're <clears throat> we're going to have to spit and glue it a little bit and you know, take one day at a time. There really isn't a foreseeable rotation that I can sit here and be confident and say this is what we're going to go with. We're going to go with tomorrow with Connor Markle and see what the best arms we have available following him for those situations in the game. And then when we get through that, we'll look at Grand Canyon on Tuesday. And once we get through that, we'll look at, okay, who's, who's left? Who can we start on Friday up in Corvallis? So it, it's... Um, you know, it puts us in a little bit of a, a bind, but on the other hand, everybody should be on all hands on deck, ready to go. There, there shouldn't be any staleness of guys getting bored. Everybody's going to be happy to contribute. So, um, you know, some guys are getting opportunities. What does that do for the bullpen, fostering a little bit more competitiveness, maybe not knowing who's going to start the next game as opposed to last year where you were almost set in a weekend rotation every single week? Um, you know, like I've told a lot of these guys, don't worry about what outs you're getting. Just come in and get outs, whether those are the first outs of the game or in the middle or at the end. That's what kind of staff we're going to have to be right now. Um, we don't have the bona fide, like I said, weekend rotation right now. We're just going to have to get outs. And you come in and if we might open with, with a guy just to get through the top three guys and you know, that's his role. Get those three guys out or they get through the first inning and then we're going to go to another guy. So. Um, it all just depends on, on how we, as a coaching staff, feel that we can best navigate an opposing lineup. Does that give you an advantage at all, maybe, of, you know, with opponents not knowing who's coming in for how long and which batters they're going to face? No, I don't think so. It makes, makes our job tougher I mean, because we gotta, we got to really be on point on, on who we're matching up with who and, and hope the game takes us down that road that we want. Um, if it doesn't, then we got to adjust on the fly and go a different route. So, you know, the bullpen guys, they got to hang with us at times. We got to get guys up and then sit them down and get a different guy up. And um, that, that gets a little taxing on those guys at times, I understand, but that's the situation we're in right now. Coach, this is an off-topic question, but it's kind of relevant to the significance of today. Pat Murphy obviously managed his first game today for the Milwaukee Brewers. What does he mean to the history of this program and how at least proud of you that he's representing this program in many ways? Uh, not surprising that uh, the Brewers are playing with a little fire and there was a little bench clear today. So um, that doesn't surprise me at all with the Pat Murphy team. Um, I, I just am super excited for him uh, and the opportunity. And, um, you know, obviously there's a special place in my heart for that guy and for what he's done for me in my life. Um, but he's he really is a, a staple of this program, and so just another representation in the big leagues of a, a Sun Devil that's done well. And um, man, I, if I were a free agent in the big leagues, I'd be fighting anybody I could to go play for him. So um, he just means the world to me, and and what a, a tremendous tremendous human that um, and leader. So just a, a great guy that I couldn't be happier for. That some of the fire that you want to put into your team a little bit? Um, I think it's in there. You know, I think in today's world, you're not allowed to leave the dugout, but um, when it comes to sparks flying, so again, that's something they've changed where <laughs> it was a little different in our day. But um, yeah, Murph, Murph had a, a very uh, good knack of being able to get his guys to play with that edge, and that's something I'm learning and, and trying to get our guys to do you know, what he did for me. You know, I, I, I thought I was invincible. Certainly I wasn't, but I thought I was because he made me feel that way. So um, that's what good leaders do. In, the, in your third year as a coach now, uh, how do you go about, I guess, achieving yeah. that same level of success or at least trying to replicate what you were able to experience under uh, Pat, but perhaps in a different way with this new generation and, and things, the circumstances <coughs> not obviously being uh, comparable. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we've talked several times just the landscape being completely different, you know, from this era to from that era. Um, but I think the 
this, the message remains consistent, you know, with, with the demands that, that we put on our players and the expectations that we hold them to. Um, and the way, you know, certain coaching styles get their players to respond are obviously different based on the personalities of the kids. But, um, you know, the end goal is the same, is you set the standards high and you, you try to hold them accountable to those standards. So um, he was a master at it. He was great at it. Um, he obviously had his uh, ups and downs early in, in his career as well. But um, at the end of the day, um, you find the right type of guys that want to play for that individual and that style of play um, and that type of culture, I guess, where it's high demands on you at all times. Um, you get the right type of kids that are relishing and playing that, then things start turning in the right direction. So. As you've kind of navigated this kind of era of coaching basically in college baseball, have you kind of talked to him about any tips that maybe he shared with you along the way that maybe worked for him that you've applied to, uh, to your leadership style? Um, you know, Murph's a big guy and in, in <clears throat> continuing to believe even when the chips are down. And, um, you know, that's something that, that we've had the chips down a few times in, in early in my career here. So uh, continuing to get guys to believe, you know, it, it was last week we were, <laughs> it was pretty blue. Um, but, you know, you blink your eyes and we have a chance to go 4 0 this week after, you know, it was probably the lowest we've been this year after getting swept up in Pullman. So um, chips are certainly down and we're fighting our way out of it. So that's, uh, sign of, of resiliency and guys that have, you know, the, the no quit mentality. I don't expect us to play perfect baseball, but uh, the effort level and the continuing to fight is better be there. And that's something that I learned from him and I'm trying to instill in these players. Todd, you mentioned that it was demoralizing last week coming from sort of Pullman and then you guys seemed like you stopped bleeding relatively quickly. Was there something that happened or anything that occurred that kind of allowed you guys to snap back and such a quick turnaround Monday against UNLV and then obviously this weekend? Uh, we met as a team and discussed kind of, again, the expectations. Um, and to put it very clear, I, I again, I said I, the scoreboard, it, there, there's things more important than winning, and that's how you represent yourself and how you represent the program you're playing for. And we're not always going to, the scoreboard's not always going to reflect what the program means. You know, there's there's times where I'm okay with coming up short if you go out and play you know, play with your hair on fire and give it everything you got and you come up short, I can live with it. Um, but I can't live with the fact of there not being the effort that's expected around here and the mindset that's expected around here. Um, so regardless, we're going to hopefully play with a better mindset, better body language, better energy about us, regardless of where you're playing on the field. And, um, you know, to their credit, they've responded very well the past three games.